Let's talk here about the headliner of this weekend. That is Rory McIlroy. He is the defending champion of this event, which is why we're talking about him in the course history section. But also, the dude has not finished outside the top five basically since the cradle. So what do you see with Rory McIlroy this week, Brandon? How do we handle him as an expensive stud, but a justifiably expensive stud? Yeah, so he's twelve thousand two hundred dollars on Fanduel. He's plus six fifty uh, to win on Fanduel Sportsbook, which is very short. I think he was plus five fifty last week in a field yeah. that's not quite what this is. So uh, that kind of says uh, a lot. He was plus one fifty five after the first round, which was awesome. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Like, so, it was so yeah. cool to see. <laughs> so I mean, like to put some percentages behind that. Uh, like when I run win simulations, Roy was about fifteen like 14-ish percent to win uh, last week. I have him down around 9% this week. So as a as a betting value, it's not really there, but he still is the favorite to win. So that matters for DFS, especially because he is attainable. Uh, he's heading back to TPC Sawgrass uh, where he won last year. Uh, he finished fifth at the Arnold Palmer last week. So he's been fourth, third, fifth, fifth, fifth in his past five starts. He's just elite. Uh, it's reflected uh, in, the, in those win odds for sure. But you know, he, he won here last year after having missed the cut in 2018. Uh, and last year, uh, this tournament did shift back to March from May. So the course did play a bit differently than a lot of the data. If you're digging really back into uh, the past player's data, just be mindful uh, of the swap. Uh, but, you know, prior to that, McElroy had finished top 12 in four of his past five starts. Uh, he had really shown, like, the ability to figure out Sawgrass. So a lot of top 12s, the win last year, there is a missed cut in there. Not saying he's going to miss the cut, anything like that, but he's kind of one of the three key studs for me this week. Uh, it's Rory, it's John Rahm, and it's Justin Thomas. You might view it differently. Uh, so I don't know what you're doing with Rory. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with Rory, uh, but I want to hear your thoughts on him. So I think that the way that I view Rory is probably going to be similar to the way that the public views him, where I think he is in a tier of his own. Like, do you agree with that? He should B, I don't think that it's so far ahead of Rom and Justin Thomas that I would play Rory despite the ownership. Uh, I, I mean, it's going to be Rory uh, as the most popular golfer. I can pretty much guarantee that uh, unless people really get onto Tiro Hatton at 9,000 and we'll talk about him. He's the uh, other contender in that one, yeah. In a second, yeah. But I mean, I have no issues pivoting. Uh, to John Rahm or Justin Thomas, even if I'm building one tournament lineup, because I think that Rory is going to be so popular that it's that it could be worth it. I think your best argument for not using Rory is if you're doing one tournament lineup, because there, the like if you're doing a single entry contest, the advantages of not using Rory are greater than if you're multi entering. Like if you're multi entering. Yeah. I don't see a justification for full fading Rory. I think that'd be incredibly stupid, and I would not recommend that. Um, but I think that you could justify being underweight. For me personally, because I do view Rory as being a full tier above John Rahm and Justin Thomas, I am more inclined to be either even with the field or overweight on him. Because I just don't see, I don't see them as v- being in the same on the same level as him. Which means I should be more okay buying into him. There's also only a two hundred dollar price gap between Rahm and McElroy, three hundred between uh, McElroy and JT. So to me, I think that because I view Rory as being a full tier above them, I am more inclined to be most likely overweight on Rory McIlroy, even while acknowledging that if you're doing a single entry lineup, just one lineup, there is a lot of incentive to not use Rory there. So I think that's a good strategy, but I'm still probably going to be in on Rory despite that. Look, this is a week where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel bad about like being this way, but you can make the case for a lot of golfers this week, and it's going to be a week where I don't really talk you out of many golfers because this is just such a loaded field. I'm not talking you out of Rory, uh, but I like Justin Thomas and John Rahm enough where I'm okay being underweight on Rory uh, and going with Rahm and Thomas to try to get some leverage wherever there is leverage to be had.